Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, like this video and press the bell icon. In the previous video, we learned how to install and set up Laravel 12 with Bootstrap 5. In this video, we will learn how to implement user registration functionality. So, let's get started. Open your terminal. Click here then choose command prompt to launch a new command prompt. Now, Type the command php artisan make colon controller register controller and press enter. This command will create a register controller class inside the app http controllers directory. Open register controller class. Now, define a method named show register to display the register view. Add the return type view which is a return type declaration indicating that this method will return a view instance. Make sure to import it from illuminate backslash view backslash view. In this method, we return the register blade view, which is located inside the auth folder. You can name the method anything, but we'll use create to follow Laravel's convention. Replace show register with create. Next, we need to define a route that will display the register view. Open web.php file. Define a get route that maps the URL register to the create method in the register controller. Import register controller. Name this route register. Now we need to create register view inside auth folder. In your terminal, type the command php artisan make colon view auth slash register and press enter. This command will create a register.blade.php file inside the resources slash views slash auth folder. Open the register.blade.php file located inside the auth folder. Open test.blade.php file. Copy the following line of code. Paste the code which you have copied in register view. End the section with at end section. Inside the at section directive, add an h1 tag with the text register. Now go back to your browser and navigate to the register route. You should see the text register displayed inside an h1 tag. Go back to Visual Studio Code. Inside the register view, I've added a form inside a bootstrap card. The form includes fields for full name, email, password, confirm password, a register button, and a link to the login page. In the app.blade.php layout file, I've added the database theme equals dark attribute to the HTML tag to enable bootstrap's dark theme. Now, if you navigate back to the register route in your browser, you should see the bootstrap styled registration form. Next, let's add the name attributes to the form fields so that Laravel can access the form data when the form is submitted. Open register.blade.php file. In the full name field, add the name attribute as name. In the email field, add the name attribute as email. In the password field, add the name attribute as password. In the confirm password field, add the name attribute as password underscore confirmation. Next, let's define a store method in the register controller, which will handle the form submission logic when a user submits the registration form. Open registerController.php file. Define a method named store that accepts a request object as a parameter so it can handle and process the incoming form data. Make sure to import the request class. Inside the store method first we will validate the data. We use the validate method on the dollar request object to make sure the submitted data is valid. First, we validate that the name field is required, must be a string, and must be between 2 and 255 characters long. Duplicate this line of code and replace name with email.
Duplicate this line of code and replace email with password. For the email field, we validate that it is required, must be a string, formatted as a valid email address, no longer than 255 characters, converted to lowercase, and unique in the user's table. Make sure to import the user class. For the password field, we validate that it is required, must be a string, at least eight characters long, and must match the confirmation field, password underscore confirmation. Then, we use the DD helper function to debug and verify if the validation is working as expected. If the validation passes, the text OK will be displayed. Next, we need to add a route to handle the form submission. Open web.php file. Duplicate this route, replace get with post, change the create method to store, and remove the route name. We don't need to name this route again, since the name register is already used for the get request above. Open register.blade.php file. Inside the form tag, set the method to post, then set the action to route, register. After that, add the at CSRF blade directive to include a CSRF token. Go back to the register page. In the full name field, enter only one character. In the email field, enter an invalid email address. In the password and confirm password fields, enter passwords that do not match, then click the register button. The OK message is not displayed, indicating that the input did not pass validation. Next, enter a valid full name, email, password, and confirm password, then click on the register button. You should see the OK message indicating that the validation has passed. Now, let's display the validation messages. Click on this button to go back. Click here to reload the page. Go back to Visual Studio Code. In the name inputs class attribute, use the at error directive to apply the is invalid class, which shows a red border when there's a validation error. Copy this line of code and paste it inside the email inputs class attribute. Replace name with email. Now paste the same code you copied into the class attribute of the password input. Replace name with password. Now, let's display validation messages below the input fields. After the name input, add the at error directive to display the validation error message for the name field. Inside this directive, use Bootstrap's invalid feedback class to show the error message in red text. Copy this line of code and paste it after the email input. Replace name with email. Now paste the same code you copied after the password input. Replace name with password. When the form fails validation, the input fields are cleared. To retain the previously entered values, we use the old directive with the input field name inside the value attribute. Inside the name input, add the value attribute and use the old directive with the input name inside double curly brace. Copy this line of code and paste it inside the email input. Replace name with email. Now paste the same code you copied inside the password input. Replace name with password. Go back to the register page. In the full name field, enter only one character. In the email field, enter a valid email address. Enter a password with fewer than eight characters. In the confirm password field, enter random characters, then click the register button. You can see two errors. The full name field must be at least two characters, and the password field must be at least eight characters. Now, enter a password and a confirm password that do not match. In the full name field, enter a name with more than two characters then click the register button. You can see a new error message. The password field confirmation does not match. Next, enter an email that corresponds to the full name, enter matching passwords in both the password and confirm password fields, and then click on the register button. You can see the OK message, which indicates that the input is valid. Click on this button to go back. Now, to see the email validation message, we need to change the input type of the email field from email to text. Go back to Visual Studio Code. 
In the email input field, change the input type from email to text. Enter a full name and an invalid email address. Then enter matching passwords in both the password and confirm password fields and click the register button. You can see an error message for the email field. The email field must be a valid email address. Now, enter a valid email address, then enter matching passwords in both the password and confirm password fields, and click the register button. You should see the OK message. Revert the changes we made to the input type. Now, let's implement Laravel's password defaults method to enforce stronger password validation rules. Open registercontroller.php file. Here, add a comma, then add rules backslash password colon colon defaults, followed by parentheses. At the top, import rules from illuminate backslash validation using the following line. Use illuminate backslash validation backslash rules. Right-click on password, select go to definition, and it will open the password.php class. This file contains the internal properties used to define Laravel's password validation rules, such as Dollarmin sets the minimum password length, default is 8. Dollarmax optionally sets the maximum length. Dollarmixed case enforces both uppercase and lowercase letters. Dollar letters requires at least one letter. Dollar numbers requires at least one digit. And dollar symbols requires at least one symbol. Open registercontroller.php file. Now, after the password defaults method, chain additional methods like mixed case to require both uppercase and lowercase letters. Min 12 to set the minimum password length to 12 characters and symbols to require at least one special character. Open register.blade.php file. Change the input type from password to text in both the password and confirm password fields. Go back to the register page. Enter full name, a valid email address. Add an alphanumeric password that is less than 12 characters long in both password and confirm password field and click on register. You can see the error message. The password field must be at least 12 characters. Now, enter a 12 character long password in both the password and confirm password fields, and then click the register button. You can see a new error message. The password field must contain at least one symbol. Next, enter a password with at least 12 characters and a special character in both fields. Then click the register button. You should see the OK message. Click on this button to go back. You might have noticed that the validation message for mixed case did not display. Let's fix this. Open registercontroller.php file. Replace defaults with min12 in the parentheses. Then remove the chained min12 method. Go back to the register page. Enter a full name and a valid email address. Then add an alphanumeric password that is less than 12 characters long in both the password and confirm password fields, and click the register button. You can see the error message. The password field must be at least 12 characters. Now, enter a 12 character long password in both the password and confirm password fields, and then click the register button. You can see a new error message. The password field must contain at least one uppercase and one lowercase letter. Now, Enter a password with at least one uppercase letter that is more than 12 characters long in both the password and confirm password fields. Then click the register button. You can see the error message. The password field must contain at least one symbol. Now, enter a password that contains at least one symbol, uppercase and lowercase letters, and is 12 characters long. Then click the register button, and you should see the OK message. Click on this button to go back. Click here to reload the page. Now that the validation works perfectly instead of displaying the OK message, we will store the user data into the user's table. Comment out this DD function. Now we use Laravel's eloquent create method on the user model and store the result in the dollar user variable. Inside the array, we retrieve the input data from dollar request for the name, email, and password fields, and we hash the password using hash make before storing it. Import hash from illuminate backslash support backslash facades by adding the following line. After storing the user in the dollar user variable, we use the auth login method and pass the dollar user variable to it. Import auth by adding this line at top use illuminate backslash support backslash facades backslash auth. 
This method logs in the user manually by setting the authenticated user in the current session. Then we redirect the user to the dashboard route. Next, we need to define a dashboard route to display the dashboard view. Open web.php file. Duplicate this route. Change the URL to dashboard. Replace the view name from test to dashboard and give this route the name dashboard. Next, we need to create a dashboard view file. Create dashboard.blade.php file inside views folder. Open test.blade.php file and copy this line of code. Paste the copied code here and end the section with at end section. Inside this section, add the text you are logged in wrapped in an H3 tag. Go back to the register page. Before we register a user, go to PHP My Admin. Here you can see that the user's table is empty at this time. Enter full name, email, password, confirm password and click on the register button. There is an error. Field password doesn't have a default value. Open registerController.php file. Here, replace name with password so that the hashed password is stored under the correct key. Go back to the register page and reload it. Enter full name, email, password, confirm password and click on the register button. You will be redirected to the dashboard page. You can see the text you are logged in. Here, you can see the URL is slash dashboard. Now go to phpMyAdmin, reload the page, and you should see the newly registered user data in the users table. You can see that the password is stored in a hashed format. In this video, we learned how to build a complete user registration form in Laravel. We implemented form validation, displayed helpful error messages, and used Laravel's password rules to enforce strong password requirements. After successful validation, we securely stored the user data in the database, hashed the password, and logged the user in automatically. Finally, we redirected the user to the dashboard. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Feel free to drop any questions or comments below, and I'll be happy to help. I will see you in next tutorial. Till then, stay safe.